Anybody who had my pager's number back in call, and when I left uh, my hometown and came to Toronto, I left my pager behind and I felt liberated. Nice. And it's the same thing with cell phones to yeah. a certain extent. And yeah. we don't need to be available all the time. It's important to have control over it. It's like anything, whether it's your alcohol, whatever it is, you need to have control over it the other way around because we're getting confused with real time. Mm -hmm. Like people have this understanding now that as soon as your technology goes off that you're missing out on real time events if you don't respond. Meanwhile, this is real time. This what I'm doing is real time. That person can wait or whatever it is because you're they not, don't know what I'm doing right now. And it's not even real life. You see people walking down the street. I think there was a Microsoft or commercial or something like that where everybody's like walking down the street. Everybody's zoned into their yeah. you know, device and nobody's living real life. Exactly. Although, I mean, there's whatever you need to do at that moment too. I find myself in that position because when you're multitasking, it happens. It's part of it. Mm -hmm. We find ways to catch up before we move on to the next thing. But yet, you know, people getting home, I got to catch up on my email. So when I go home, I don't do this. But that never really works out because there's this and that and you're always on the go. But moderation. And Mike, mm -hmm. it's funny you made that mention because whether that's the cause or not, it mm -hmm. does affect it. Probably it was just affecting what was already hurting. Yeah, you know? and it's a it's a big yeah. wake up call. I would get it checked out only because Ian, not everyone mm -hmm. knows who Ian is, but he had the same thing he was complaining about a couple of weeks ago. Same exactly as what you just well, described. Well, you know, here's a scary thought. I, I have a friend who, um, well, I used to work with him, and he had a cell phone, and, and uh, everything was on the cell phone. All, mm -hmm. Like all his business calls yeah. were on the cell phone. He said that he could tell when he was going to get a call before he got it because his head would start <laughs> yeah, to hurt. How funny is that? That's not funny. I know. Like, hello. That reminds <laughs> me. Did you ever see the comedy um, Black Books? It's by no. Dylan Moran, the Irish guy who had a really funny comedy show. He's a drunk who owns like a bookstore. He's miserable. And he had a guy and he was the same thing. Every time this guy got a call, he would have this head pain. So oh, yeah. every time he would piss him off, he would dial his number because oh. he would just go nuts. And yeah. I do think we start responding to things. It's kind of crazy. Well, Our phones it's, are uh, training us. <laughs> well, something's happening. <laughs> okay. Something. Shall we get busy sure. with the show? Okay. Let's take a break. Uh, hey, what do we have for music today, Theo? What? Robbie Rocks. Excellent choice. Robbie Since uh, he was a performer last night, everybody had a good time at the Black Swan. Awesome. So let's hear some Robbie Rocks. We're going to come back with Robin Seagerman right after this as Liquid Lunch gets underway. Finally, <laughs> on a Wednesday, we'll be right back. Waiting, all right. <laughs> <laughs> The party begins. Girls' Night Out Wines, hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know, it's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes.
you got the illusions. The illusions of grandeur. You got the illusions. The illusions of grandeur. Producer of this, a 
producer of that, you got the delusions. Delusions are grand, you're You got the delusions. How, 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 how? Delusions are grand, And we're back on Liquid Lunch, and it stopped snowing outside, Aaron. Yes, See? Did. Yes, Very for nice. now. Anyways, yes. it's uh, only six more months, and then we'll be back to the spring like conditions. I hope so. <laughs> you never know. It's 2012, you know? That's right. Things may change. But we've got Robin Seegerman here, and uh, Robin, great to have you back on the show. Thank you. It's great to be back. Thanks for having me. What was it, a couple of years ago? It was. It, yeah. Uh, and you haven't changed a bit. Well, that's because I have these Im immortality rings so uh. to confer upon one not only eternal youth, but also physical immortality. Excellent. Which means that I'm probably going to be, uh, you know, renovating a few kitchens. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, then, <laughs> no, what do then let's talk. <laughs> yeah, let's right. talk. Because you've got this book, right? right. Uh, the Renovation Boot Camp Kitchen. Right. Design and remodel your kitchen without losing your wallet, your mind, or your spouse. Right. And I told that, uh, that title to a contractor that I was working with once when I was mm -hmm. in the middle of writing it. I told him the title and he said, oh, you're writing a fairy tale. Oh. <laughs> I said, no, 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 it really is right. possible. You've just been in the business too long. See, maybe he should, maybe, maybe all these renovators should get the book and just maybe they can get uh, some of the personal, you know, the relationship management information right. that they need too. We need to shift their thinking sometimes and it seems like Absolutely. it's a good guide for that. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it really is. Uh, and that's why I wrote it because mm -hmm. I've been actually a designer and a kitchen renovator for over 20 years. I've done over 250 renovations. And if you've ever struggled through one, imagine going through over 250, because I go through it with my clients. Right. And so every time I'm sitting down with a client to tell them what to expect and how the process works, how long it's going to take, how much it's going to cost, everybody has the same questions and the same worries and the mm -hmm. same insecurities one way or another. And I thought at one point, gosh, it would be great if there was a book out there that I could give clients when I sign a contract, it would answer all their questions before we get started. Right. And I couldn't find it. You know, mm -hmm. there are beautiful books out there with gorgeous photographs, ideas, magazines, all kinds of things. But they don't talk about the process, the messy, dirty, roll-up-your-sleeves process. Right. And so I decided, well, I better write it. So okay, so you're, you're, you've been doing this for, for a while, and you've, you've seen it all, I, I take Just it. Just about. In, in, in well, mind of, you, every time I think I've seen it all, there's something else well, that crops up. Wh which is for the second book, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> but... Um, what are the things that, uh, what are these, like, you know, you talk about without losing your wall, your mind, or your spouse, so these are the issues, but what happens in that process that causes these things to happen, these well, problems? Well, the number one problem that I see is people, our society is an instant gratification society. Mm -hmm. We want everything right now. Mm -hmm. We don't want to wait. And if the planning process is too long, mm -hmm. we want to cut corners. And you right. know, it's it's everybody's instinct to go. Oh, I don't really need that. Let's just let's just start tearing things apart because I, I I really want to get going. I can't stand it another minute, and that is the first problem. Right. The second problem is getting into the whole process and not knowing what your budget is, because without having a a fixed budget and you've got to have a little bit of leeway there yes but you have to know what you can afford because if you start running away with a project excuse me <clears throat> without knowing what you can afford that's where people get into trouble mm -hmm. and costs start mounting and mounting stress builds when the client is feeling stressed all of the other people on the job are also feeling stressed they they oh, feel yeah, that yeah. energy yeah. and it's bad for everyone no one wants to work in that mm -hmm. kind of an environment you know I can't believe though no, maybe it's just me, but I can't believe somebody would start doing that. Well, I did it here, but I had a budget of zero. And, That's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Finders keeper you know, style. Yeah. And I was making it up as I went along. But um, I can't believe somebody would really do their serious house, home, kitchen without having, A, a plan in mind and a budget. You would be and surprised. And all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You would be well, surprised. What are they thinking? I mean, they're not. They're really not <laughs> thinking clearly. They're really, and, and, and maybe they are not 
they haven't had the experience. Mm -hmm. They haven't been through it before, so they don't know what the pitfalls are. And that's what this is going to tell you. Mm -hmm. And it will take you through the process because also people will say to me, well, so how long can it take? It's gonna take a couple of weeks? I go, mm, no, from beginning to end, the process is gonna take six months. Mm -hmm. And it's like I've shot them. They go, what? Yeah, how come it takes so long? How? I mean, I, you're shocking me right now. Okay, <laughs> well, because there's the planning process. Yeah. And the planning process is at least a couple of months of that. Mm -hmm. I would think, yeah. So you, you take two months off of that right away. And depending on what you're actually doing in the room, if you're tearing down walls, you're, mm -hmm. you're re relocating plumbing and electrical, these things take time to do well. And you can't just dash them off. Drywall, painting, relaying the floor, putting in the cabinets, mm -hmm. all of these things. And I've got a schedule in the book, actually. It talks about what happens on every single day. And it uses uh, the, the model of a, of a kind of um, middle of the road kitchen. Not too mm -hmm. big, not too small, not too complicated, okay. but what happens every single day. And it's 35 days, 35 to 37 working days from mm -hmm. beginning to end of the construction. Now, keep in mind that's working days, not Saturdays and Sundays. Because right. the trades have a life and a family too, so they only work Mondays to Fridays. Mm -hmm. So that actually is over a couple of months. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. that's eight, seven and a half, eight, nine weeks right there. Mm -hmm. And that's before, you know, anything crops up that maybe we weren't expecting. Like you open up a wall and oh my gosh, we find mold and we right. have to take care of that. You can't just blithely go on without cleaning that up. Well, in order to do that, you've got to hire new people that puts the rest of the schedule on hold. Everything gets delayed. So there are these things that crop up that people aren't, mm -hmm. they're not aware of, maybe because they're not experienced, that they really need to be aware of so that they know what to expect. And if the worst case scenario happens, they're prepared. Mm -hmm. If the best case scenario happens, everybody's happy. Right which is hopefully how it is, but I, how do you prepare for people for the worst case scenario and budget wise as well? Because if they say $5,000 my budget, you right. have your plan, but all of a sudden there is mold or you have to dig up the ground, how do you deal with that? You have to decide what your budget is and allow an extra 15% okay. on top of that for any eventuality that might crop up. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't crop up, woohoo, go on vacation, That's you right. know, um, or go out for dinner. You know, that almost seems like it's not enough. 15%. Well, that is the minimum and it really does depend on what you're doing and mm -hmm. what what kind of job it is because you know, I will work in homes where people are spending over $100,000 on a kitchen. Mm -hmm. So, when you talk 15%, that's probably fine. If you've got a $5,000 budget, 15% right. may not be enough. Mm -hmm. So, it really does depend. Um, but you do have to talk to experts, but you know, I'll have people come to me for the first time, for example, and they'll sit down and I'll say, well, what, what sort of budget do you want to work with? And they go, well, I don't really have a budget. Well, problem number one. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to give you some homework. <laughs> You've got to go and figure that out. And they said, well, how do we figure that out? Because we don't know what things cost. Great question. But they don't really need to know that right off the top. What they need to know is what can they afford. Mm -hmm. And if they need financing, better find that out before you start shopping. Well, wouldn't they, you know, I would think that uh, uh, you would start off, uh, whoever is initiating this, we need to redo the kitchen, mm -hmm. um, has some idea what they want. And, and, you know, has probably, yeah, it just seems natural to me, you're gonna go to Home Depot or somewhere and just mm -hmm. check out what you're considering you know? There are a lot of factors involved though that you may not know up front. For example, you go to Home Depot and say, okay, I like these cabinets, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of other things that go into the kitchen. There are these the appliances, the lighting, the flooring, the sink and the faucet, the backsplash tiles, the mm -hmm. drywalling, the painting, the labor to do all of that. So getting a cabinet price doesn't really Absolutely. give you the whole picture, you see? And that's where I think a lot of people are, are getting shocked, sticker shock, mm -hmm. because they don't know what other things that they should be considering. So in the book, I also have, again, a middle of the road kitchen where I've listed all of the things that went into that particular kitchen and what they cost. Now that's what they cost for this kitchen, but you can at, at least use that list mm -hmm. and then shop for things if it's too much money, Find things on the list that are less money, but at least you'll know the list of things that you need to right. con consider.
No, that's perfect because people definitely need that. Is there a guide for people who have no vision? Because a lot of people know what they want to do, but they have no idea what their vision is. Well, they really do need to talk to a professional. Mm -hmm. And whether that's a professional who works in a kitchen studio or in a big box store or someone independent mm -hmm. like myself, they really should sit down with a professional because we can put together a roadmap. Right. And that is going to be the way that you will actually also save money and save time and aggravation. Mm -hmm. Because once you get into it, you don't realize how many thousands of little decisions need to be made. Right. And if there's someone guiding you through it, it can be a lot less stressful. You know, you just reminded me of that, uh, that Seinfeld where uh, Jerry's getting his kitchen redone oh. and the guy's asking him, do you want this kind of hinge? Do you want this kind of hinge? <laughs> just do it. And that's right. <laughs> That's why I hired you. That's right. Do you want this knob or that knob? I don't know. It's a knob. Do you get that? Yes. Do you get a lot of that where it's like, I just can't deal with it. Figure it out. Yes. At, at a certain point, And that's fine. As long as the person realizes that I'm then going to be making some mm -hmm. decisions and they have to allow me to do that. Otherwise, when it's done, mm -hmm. don't then come back and say, right. oh, but why did you do that? Well, because you, you have to get the job done. Mm -hmm. So either... Well, somebody needs to make the decision, right. you know, so. Um, so now who would be the ideal, I mean, who should consider getting this book? Everybody <laughs> who's thinking of doing a kitchen renovation. <laughs> Honestly, but not only that, actually other designers, because mm -hmm. here's the thing that I found in my own business. It's a delicate subject to mm -hmm. talk with people about their budget, for example. You know, it's very personal. Mm -hmm. I don't know you really that well yet when we first sit down mm -hmm. and talk. There's a line that people feel if you cross it right at the beginning, they get very nervous right. and they start to close off. And so giving them a book, mm -hmm. you know, is something that is going to allow them mm -hmm. to read that in their personal space without feeling pressured by anybody. And so actually, I, I'm going to be speaking to the National Kitchen and Bath Association mm -hmm. uh, in January to their members, and I think that this can help everybody who's been in the business no matter how long, because when they sign a contract, they can give it to their client and say, you know what, this is gonna answer an awful lot of your questions. If you mm -hmm. have any further questions, by all means, talk to me. But mm -hmm. it takes the pressure off everybody from being in an awkward situation. That sounds like a great idea, and it almost seems to me like you, this should there should be a book for every other area of the house or one that compiles all well, the Well, I'm, I'm going to be writing it. My yeah. next one is bathrooms. Awesome. Re design That's and remodel your bathroom without getting hosed. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good idea. Now, are you going to have one for like how to build a special little sleeping place under your desk? Uh, well, I haven't been asked for that yet, but I might consider it if I have enough response. Sounds like you might be <laughs> remodeling that, that channel soon. Uh, but there's basements and attics and bedrooms and kids' rooms and decks and docks and cottages and, you know, it goes on and on and on. You're going to be busy for a while. I think so. That's the plan. Yeah, but this is very helpful. I think it's a great idea what you're doing. And kitchen Thank and you. bathroom, most important space, I feel, in a house yeah. I think I think it's I mean you know when I saw kitchen I thought okay bath actually I'm in the middle of a bathroom oh are you mm -hmm. oh, right okay. so of course I'm uh, <laughs> doing everything wrong but uh, oops because I don't have the book yet that's right but, sorry you know, yeah but isn't like these are the most important parts of the house right if somebody's yes, thinking absolutely. about increasing the value of their house what mm -hmm. is it kitchen is number one bathroom is number two mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up though because here's the thing Unless you're thinking about selling your house in the next three years after mm -hmm. you've done a kitchen mm -hmm. renovation or a bathroom renovation, you're not going to get all of your money out. Because after that, you've been using that room day in, day out for right. those years. It starts to look a little bit worn. It starts to look a mm -hmm. little bit dated after five years, ten years, you know. You may still love it, and that's fabulous, mm -hmm. but somebody walking into your house right. is going to go... Mm, needs a little sprucing up. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be aware that if you're going to live in your house for a long time, don't do it for resale value. Do it because it's going to make you feel better. It's going to improve the quality of your life and that of your family. You're not doing it for somebody else. That's right. a bad mm -hmm. reason to do it. Because anybody could walk in and they say they don't like they don't it. Like they it. want exactly. something completely Absolutely. different, right? Oh, thank you. I tell people <laughs> that all the time. Honestly, you know, no matter what you do, somebody is going to hate it yeah. and somebody's going to love it. Always. You never know. Yeah. yeah, so do it for yourself because you're going to love it. So what do you do uh, when you're not writing the books? Like, do you actually, 
Uh, do you go in and, and help people with their kitchens? Oh, absolutely. I do the design. The yes, yes. I'm an interior design consultant, and so I go in and I, I help them with the whole mm -hmm. house. We can do furnishings, and and um, <clears throat> I do space planning for other areas as well, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, remodeling of, of all kinds of, of different rooms. So yeah, I do the whole house. Some people they just go and they're going to just go deal with the contractor, right? They're not dealing with someone like you yeah. who's bringing that. Um, that expertise, mm -hmm. really, that design yeah. expertise, and I'm assuming that you've got connections with contractors yes. too, yeah. so that you can bring, you know, who to work with. Right. Right. Where right. They, uh, rather than choosing a contractor, well. you know, out of the yellow pages or something, and you don't really know what you're getting into. So true. And <laughs> and I always tell people it's a real benefit mm -hmm. when you have a team working on your house who's already worked together before. They know what the expectations mm -hmm. are. The communication is already there. Because in every job, communication is key. Mm -hmm. And right. if communication is off, that's where problems happen. And you know, that's not to say that an established team isn't going to have some problems. Mm -hmm. Renovations, they're not an exact science. They are more art than they are science. And you know, if you're doing something brand new mm -hmm. on a renovation, there can be problems. But the thing is that if you have a team that's established, they have a method of working together that they can figure things out right. and work through it better than someone who you know isn't working in tandem with the mm -hmm. other people on the job. And you, it sounds like you'd be the person to take the stress off of the people you're working with. And you hear nightmare stories about contractors all the time, right? And people not knowing. And at least you're the go-to person that can put people at ease. Well, and the the nightmare stories really are, I. In my experience, mm -hmm. it's not the contractor's fault most of the time. Mm -hmm. The contractor hasn't been given clear enough instructions. Mm -hmm. And so he's making his own judgment call based on his experience, which may not be what you're expecting. Right. And that's where the problems come in, where someone, and I've had this happen to me, where a client will call me in to try and fix things and say, how could the contractor not know? <laughs> well, the contractor doesn't have a crystal ball. Right, he can't And unless your you tell him, and it's clear in writing, in drawings, Absolutely. you know, and, and reinforced on the site, they don't know. So it's really not their fault in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. It's not to say, it, not every case, you know, it's all different. Well, yeah. it's like because, I mean, I could just see it because the, the homeowner <clears throat> doesn't deal with contractors on a full time basis. Right. You've got, a, a, right. you know, some contractors that you have. Right. Uh, great relationship right. with already. So yeah. you're like the liaison between yeah. the homeowner and the contractor. And you know what? The, the, the thing is, too, that the contractor and I, sometimes there's an issue that comes up on mm -hmm. a job, something we're not expecting. The contractor and I will talk about it together. We'll come up with a resolution. The mm -hmm. contractor will fix it. The client never is the wiser. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's what we're there for so that we don't, the client doesn't get stressed out about it because mm -hmm. they don't know what the answer is. Mm -hmm. And so if, but the problem is also when a client wants to be involved 100% and they see a problem, they start to get anxious mm -hmm. and we, you know, just let us handle it, really, let us mm -hmm. handle it, it will be fine. But when they can't take that leap of faith or give us that trust, that's also when things start to have a, 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 an issue because mm -hmm tension starts to escalate and and nobody works well under those conditions Absolutely. you know in so many situations you need someone who can operate as a you know, moderator type yeah. of role right yeah yeah and that's really where I say to clients at the very beginning I'll try and you know diffuse a situation if a, it, a husband and wife for example will sit down and say well I want this and I want that and then right. they start nattering together and I'll say whoa time out you know do you want me to step out of the room because sometimes right. I feel like I've got a marriage counseling degree I was gonna that's say right. you might need it wouldn't hurt <laughs> that's right exactly so have you saved some marriages uh <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if I can say I've saved some marriages. I've seen some marriages that were sorely tested. And, and really, mental health professionals will tell you that a renovation mm -hmm. is one of the most stressful things that a marriage can endure. Yeah. Because it's not an easy thing to have strangers tromping through your very personal I space. And it's a mess. And also, you need to know that people care about what your space ends up like and I, I you know mm -hmm. that's something that sometimes I care too much um, but absolutely it's a very stressful thing for marriages right. now does this book also have like design ideas because people often they want 
something to look at, something to inspire them yes. in terms of what they want in their new kitchen? Yes. There are some design ideas, but actually that is not the focus of this book because there are 10 billion gorgeous books already there for mm -hmm. design ideas and magazines. But mm -hmm. here's the thing. I've been interviewed in an awful lot of magazines, had my work featured and so forth, and, and one time an editor was um, interviewing me about a particular project that they were featuring. And she said, this is gorgeous. Now, how much did this project cost? And I told her, and she said, oh, we can't say that. That's too much. That's, that would scare our readers. Can we say it costs this much? And I said, mm. well, no, you can't, because it didn't cost that much. Yeah. And I don't want people to get uh, set up with false expectations. We mm -hmm. have to be real about mm -hmm. what these things cost. So that's why this book is what it mm -hmm. is. It is not. Uh, a lot of design, there are some design ideas, but that's not the predominant feature because there's already a lot of that on the market, which mm -hmm. I found does not address the reality of the cost and the time and what documentation you need, who you need to hire, the questions you need to mm -hmm. ask, what to expect. So that's really more the focus. But there are things like how do you pick style? How do you pick colors? What, what kind of mm -hmm. scheme should you be looking for, whether it's traditional, transitional, contemporary? Mm -hmm. So there is some of that in the book, for sure. And your people, you're saving everybody time because yeah. this is being realistic. Yeah and it may stop people from running waiting for another couple of years because it's right. just not going to fit into their life so you're saving your time and their time but they so can start true. the planning process Absolutely. now yes. and they can uh, just go 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 at it without mm -hmm. uh, stressing themselves out. Exactly. well and in fact one woman wrote to me <clears throat> after i launched my book um, and I, I mentioned to you earlier, I was on the CBC earlier, mm -hmm. and the people just wrote in in droves about this book, which was really exciting. But one woman said to me, I don't have time to read a book. Just tell me what I need to know. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, my best advice to you is mm -hmm. if you don't have time to read a book, don't do it, period. Right. Because if you try to cut corners, you are going to get yourself in trouble. Really, truly, please, if you mm -hmm. do nothing else, read the book because it's going to tell you what you need to know. I can't yeah. tell you in five minutes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have needed to write that's the book. That's why the book is yeah, there. Yeah, that's why it's that's there, right. exactly. So anybody considering redoing their kitchen should get it? Also contractors? Some, Absolutely. A, a way for them to deal with their customers it's better? Exactly. Well, and it again, they can give it to their customers and say, look, this is what you can expect. And because it's realistic, and mm -hmm. I've done over 250 renovations, I know the reality of the situation, mm -hmm. and I say the things that sometimes other people can't say face to face because it's mm -hmm. a little uncomfortable. Right. So that's why I say in the book, and the contractor can say, here, read this. Then if you have questions, come talk to me. Now, where do people, where can they get their hands on the book? It is on Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, and it's shipping immediately. It makes a fabulous Christmas gift because if somebody wants to renovate in the spring, yeah. they need to be planning now. Right. And it's a hint. Yes. <laughs> you need to do your kitchen. That's right. That's right. Just a wee hint. Just a wee hint. Yes. And um, now when's the bathroom book coming out? Uh, that, I, I'm not sure exactly when it's coming out, but I'm working on it now. That's so, great. But in the meantime, if people want an ebook version, they can go to my website, which is renovationbootcamp.com. What, for the bathroom can, one or the kitchen the one? The kitchen one. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Great. But, um, and there are also tips and so forth. The bathroom is coming. I'm working on it, but I, I am not going to commit to a date yet because, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Okay. Absolutely. Well, that's yeah. great. And if somebody wants to contact you to help uh, with their kitchen, what's the best way for them to do that? I'm at Robin at renovationbootcamp.com. Great. And I'm happy to uh, respond. I also have a radio show mm -hmm. at webtalkradio.net called Renovation Bootcamp. And uh, twice a week, mm -hmm. or sorry, twice a month, I uh, invite guests on who are experts in all kinds of different areas of renovation mm -hmm. and design contractors, interior designers. I had a clinical psychologist on actually this week mm -hmm. and we were talking about um, how do we know we're encountering either someone who's really messy or a hoarder when we go in to uh, do, talk to them about redesigning their house. Because sometimes as a design professional, mm -hmm. you don't know what you're dealing with. And so she was talking about the hallmarks and, and what really you should do about that. So some fascinating stuff. Can you quickly share that with yeah, us? I'm curious, the difference that. between <laughs> order. Yeah, I would love to know. Well, you know, and I know some people
people are going, oh, I don't know if I'm crossing <laughs> that line. Yeah, my, I'm a little nervous here. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's really tough. tough. And so you have to approach these things delicately and to know what to look for mm -hmm. and to know also whether you should be worried about yourself or someone you love. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really, it's really interesting because people say they want to do something in their house. And, um, you know, I've encountered a couple of situations where I say, well, I can't really help you yet until this There's, is dealt with so right. yeah. you know that's a whole other emotional connection to is. what's going on yeah that's and a that, whole other show itself oh yeah. absolutely that could be a reality tv show <laughs> there is i think one. there is one <laughs> isn't that funny yeah wish i'd thought of that yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right Robin. that's amazing yeah. thanks for coming in today thank you thank you so this. much and, uh, for giving me the it's, opportunity uh, sounds like the right thing for a lot of people because uh, you got to have a great kitchen mm -hmm. so. absolutely please thanks come so back much. and keep us posted especially with the yeah, bathroom book the bathroom as well i out. will I'll although let you we know. might be finished by then okay <laughs> <laughs> i hope so <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh let's take a little break yes and uh we'll come back with uh, phil jacobs right after this great. talking about natural medicine as liquid lunch continues on a wednesday we'll be right back Chimes have to remind himself who he is. It's such a try. Oh. Uh, welcome back to uh, Liquid Lunch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oops. No, we're back. Uh, we, we got Phil Jacobs here. And Phil, great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. So, um, natural medicine. What's your uh, interest? What's in my interest? Uh, in well, my yeah. interest in uh, natural medicine brings, um, brings me to my story. Mm -hmm. um, I was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis uh, 12 years ago. And then I had a, a huge uh, attack of multiple sclerosis in 2005. Whoa. Um, and basically have just sort of been in recovery for the past six years. 
So um, three, three and a half years ago, I went to study um, traditional medicine, mm -hmm. um, acupuncture, Chinese herbs, um, what else is there, body work, uh, Twain mm -hmm. medical massage and Qigong, uh, breathing exercises mm -hmm. and meditation. And then I found uh, through, uh, through, the, through the course that I had to apply it in my own life because I had to learn it to be able to practice it. And then all of a sudden I was getting better. And then I was understanding that maybe traditional natural medicine is the way to go for me mm -hmm. and not, uh, not be on the pharmaceuticals that I was on, you know, the Western Okay, medicine. so yeah. what was it? Which natural remedies or which strategies were you noticing were, were um, helping The you? best one for me straight away was acupuncture mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because it's, um, there's a phenomenal, th um, I guess, phenomena that happens that brings awareness to the body, so the mind-body connection. Mm. Okay. Um, so if there's any, mm -hmm. anything going um, a little off, acupuncture is the best way to draw attention mm -hmm. to the area that, that needs help, I guess, in right. the body. So natural medicine, in a sense, is um, relying on the, own, the, the, the body's system mm -hmm. to heal itself. Absolutely. Right. And, and, I, and it, I find it, think different things work well for different people, but mm -hmm. I have found great results from acupuncture as well. So you're in the process of healing yourself and obviously wanting to share. I want to share, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so tell us a little bit about that journey as well, because you have your hand in me very many different things, and it seems like you're going to put it all together. Hopefully, to at some point. I'd like to hear a little bit more about okay, that plan okay. and how you think it'll... Um, so what I've done um, is I've gone out and I'm, I'm volunteering um, mm -hmm. at uh, uh, the McEwen House. Mm -hmm. um, I've been there for about a year and a half uh, because I've seen the medicine work in my own life, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to sort of get out there, not necessarily take any money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, for for the practice right now because I'm sort of having obviously I'm a new practitioner and I'm having right. um, issues with the taking money for getting people better relying on their own body system right right that doesn't um, so I'm, anyway um, so I'm volunteering um, at the McEwen house and they provide housing support for people with HIV mm -hmm. and so um, not youth um, so anybody over 20 to basically um, you know in their 60s and 70s that I've been right. seeing there um, and I've found since I've been there, like amazing improvements just with the acupuncture, mm -hmm. you know, not using any Chinese herbs or um, anything, anything like that, but okay. a, a bit of bi uh, mind body work, um, Qigong meditation with, uh, with the clients there. And I'm seeing uh, some vast improvements um, just by acupuncture alone. Can it? These are people with AIDS, right? HIV? HIV. Mm -hmm. um, AIDS is a, is a, is a, um, is a um, I want to say variation of that, but that's um, a progression of mm -hmm. the HIV virus. So people can live with HIV, mm -hmm. right. uh, manage their lives, and, and be fully So fine. they're just positive with the virus. With the positive the virus. with the virus. Yeah, mm -hmm. They're not necessarily yeah. sick. Full blown. Right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So the, the immune system, right? Um, just a quick background on that. If the CD4 count goes down uh, below 200, um, then it's considered uh, AIDS. Okay. Um, that's when the immune system can't fight off a common cold um, or just a, or, or a common infection that right. we can usually fight off, right? And that's what um, people with AIDS usually die from. So you're saying that the uh, acupuncture alone can keep HIV positive uh, people uh, healthy? Healthy, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but not only dealing with the HIV itself, um, we're dealing with people that um, are dealing with uh, backaches, arthritis, right. um, gastrointestinal uh, problems from the medications. Mm -hmm. uh, but the whole thing with the acupuncture um, and the immune system is what it does is it can help boost the immune system um, s to help fight off any sort of common colds or um, any, any pathogens, r decrease the stress level um, mm -hmm. So the body can actually heal itself and, and uh, nurture itself, um, and people can live um, um, a regular, good, healthy regular lives. Life. Yes. And do you find this is also helping them on an emotional level? Because often that's what's affecting yeah, yeah, our body yeah, yeah. as well, right? Absolutely, so. absolutely. Um, so the the mechanism with the acupuncture is um, there's a nervous nervous uh, system response because we mm -hmm. feel something when the acupuncture needle goes in and the stimulation, right? So the nervous system sends a response to the area. Um, and the central central nervous system is the brain. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, in, in my, I want to um, sort of simplify the brain, there's the brain stem, um, which is your um, sort of instinct to survive. Mm -hmm. um, there's the limbic system, which is the emotions, and then there's a the cortex, um, which, which is your awareness. Um, any stimulation of 
um, the acupuncture point um, to get a nervous system response from the body is going to stimulate the central nervous system, which is going to cause maybe some emotional releases um, and let the pe let people um, um, let go of mm -hmm. what they're mm -hmm. what they're dealing with um, in a in a positive way to help them move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and also to help lower the um, the brainstem response or sort of reactivity um, mm -hmm. with the with the stress levels, right. um, to help the p uh, people calm down, uh, decrease stress, anxiety levels will go down, sleep patterns will get better, digestion will get better. Mm -hmm. Now, is this any kind of treatment, or is this a treatment specifically for some sort of uh, emotional or mental? We issues? it's uh, any kinds of treatments. Um, we can go from um, an awareness point of view. We can go from an emotional point of view. We can mm -hmm. go from a physical point of view. So if there's a physical ailment, um, uh, in my experience, there's always been an emotional component and then an awareness compo uh, com component around uh, the physical ailment um, and the emotional component. And they say, th I mean, you, there are books out there that say, you know, for every physical ailment, it's. Uh, there's a some something else going on psychological like I think if I remember correctly back pain lower back pain is uh, money related if you can got money be. stress mm -hmm. that's kind of where it can show up physically it can now um, in Chinese medicine we look at uh, we look at the kidneys um, mm -hmm. and the lower back so if there's any lower back pain we generally treat the kidney not the kidney itself but the kidney system mm -hmm. so there's the kidney organ um, the kidneys are located in the lower back that can help understand also that the kidneys, the, the organ themselves, release the cortisol from the adrenal cortex. So the stress levels, doesn't matter if it's financial stress, um, it could be uh, mental stress, it could be um, um, any, any sort of stress involved mm -hmm. um, that raises the cortisol levels in the body mm -hmm. will affect the kidneys and deplete the kidneys, allowing for the back to become weak. Mm -hmm. And then any sort of strain um, um, put on the body can actually injure the back when people are under stress. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a chronic stress if it's mm -hmm. repetitive, um, that when the cortisol is released, mm -hmm. this, the, this is the fight or flight syndrome that starts to impact the body. Um, the body can't then digest and nurture itself. Okay. So the cortisol levels in the body are so high that they're actually taking it from the body, not the digestive system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then it depletes the body and things start to deteriorate. So things right. develop like arthritis, um, uh, neurological disorders, uh, physical disorders, all, all kinds of things can happen with chronic stress, not just from finances. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so say something like um, depression, right? That a lot of people are taking medication for mm -hmm. these days. Like, does do, does the nat does um, acupuncture or natural medicine have you seen it have a positive impact? I'm going to talk from my own experiences, and I have seen from uh, from clients, but uh, um, I think it's better if I talk from my own experiences. Mm -hmm. There, um, through uh, when I was diagnosed with MS, it actually um, the MS um, affected the limbic system, which was the emotions, and then I was in a full out depression, yeah. mm -hmm. um, something I couldn't get out of unless my body healed itself. So I was put on the antidepressants, mm -hmm. um, sort of numbing um, what was going on and sort yeah. of ba balancing things out. Um, going on um, and sort of using the acupuncture and the Chinese herbs and the, the, uh, the meditation um, actually helped me get off the medications and allow my body to start healing itself with natural mm -hmm. things rather than synthetic things. Synthetic mm -hmm. things. So um, instead of numbing out and blocking out what was really going on, I actually had to go deep inside of myself yeah. um, and figure out what it was, let it go, and then allow myself the time to heal from those, whatever trauma it was from mm -hmm. that was causing the depression, right? Well, I think one of the other issues with medication is that um, it, it's usually the liver that has to process mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. So any kind of medication is putting stress on the liver. Yes. And, and uh, I, in it Chinese medicine, you guys look at the liver and what's going on with right. the liver along do, with the other do. organs, right? Do you yes, want to talk do. about that a little bit? Sure, sure. Um, liver chi, or sorry, well, we look at the liver um, and we look at liver chi stagnation, liver chi depression, actually mm -hmm. in Chinese medicine. Um, is the first sign of somebody becoming depressed. Now, chronic depression then leads, um, all the organs are in the body are um, r related to each other. So the, mm -hmm. the liver is related to the spleen, is related to the kidney, or is related to the lungs, which is related to the heart. So when one organ is out of balance for a certain period of time, then the other ones have to sort of step in mm -hmm. and take the, take the workload or whatever so it is. So it's more stress on, they on become, those as well. They become depleted as well, yeah. and then disease 
chronic disease actually starts mm -hmm. from just depression or somebody. Now, depression can happen from um, a multitude of things. Um, in Chinese medicine, um, there's a direct branch from the liver organ itself directly to the brain. Mm -hmm. So your thoughts, your feelings, your sort of perception of your external environment can completely affect how your internal organ system mm -hmm. operates. Absolutely. And that's the thing with Chinese medicine that's great is that you're going to the root of the problem instead of kind of hiding the symptoms of whatever you're dealing with, right. which is also creating more pressure on your other organs and mm -hmm. you have to keep going back and forth. Right, right, so right, right. so in, in the journey of healing with people, uh, or not healing, uh, letting, uh, facilitating the healing because people are healing themselves yeah. in, in this journey, um, there's lots of things that will come up um, mm -hmm. and sort of maybe be maybe hard to face. Um, and that's when I like to introduce this concept of mindfulness and compassion mm -hmm. around the things that come up because I tend, I tended to actually hate what was coming up, which in turn, um, uh, started, I started hating things about myself, which then just sort of kept me in that sort of realm of depression. So, so what mm -hmm. was this? This was, uh, through meditation, through you were, you meditation. were getting, you were going deep and, and finding I was the able core to go issues deep. that were probably the root cause of, 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 yeah, of yeah. everything you were going through. Yeah, it's, it mm -hmm. sounds really weird. Um, well, no. no. Okay. <laughs> Maybe to some people. Yeah, <laughs> <Sorry. not to laughs> okay. okay. But um, for me it was, and, and the journey over the past uh, little while, um, I've, been, um, um, I've been exploring different uh, herbal substances mm -hmm. um, and exploring myself and realizing that I've been holding on to maybe some childish hood, hood issues that I've been angry at. Mm -hmm and then um, working through those and letting them go and then finding out that my arthritic s symptoms are disappearing without um, mm -hmm. herbal medicine, acupuncture, and all of these outside things. Just letting go, basically. Just letting go but, and just creating the awareness around it, having uh, self-compassion mm -hmm. uh, towards the self um, has been quite incredible. And I, Okay, so uh, okay. Uh, can you talk about uh, like how the stuff comes up, these issues that come up, these deep core issues? Because so many people, I, I suspect, mm -hmm. are uh, don't even know how to go about that. Mm -hmm. They may not even be aware that there's issues there, and they may have physical symptoms. Like I, I, right. I tend to believe that probably almost all physical ailments. Mm -hmm. are really fundamentally related to core uh, mental emotional mm -hmm. issues I believe that in myself yes right. so uh, but people don't know how to um, even begin to, to go deep where and do you start, start to dig that stuff right out, okay right? it's like opening Pandora's box right and right. necessarily do you want to you no, know that that's to. that's the question right <laughs> I mean. a lot of people don't want to you want to live with pain <laughs> and mm. drugs <laughs> but yeah, so m most of like um i i was in that situation where yeah. i wanted to numb out that's um i had a, a huge addiction problem um mm -hmm. with uh, cocaine and alcohol and uh, there's been some sort of recent uh, sort of wanting to and, and desires to do that and i'm like mm -hmm. why do i want to do this i'm i'm, I'm getting healthy mm -hmm. um, but there's a whole idea of numbing out and not wanting to face um, necessarily, uh, when, when I say what's coming up, I'm saying like those thoughts in your head, mm -hmm. um, those sort of stories that are created around the external environment and, and, and you're um, getting wrapped up in the story, not really what's happening. But people don't right. even know that they have those stories. Like give us an example okay. of that, because I'm not even quite sure what you mean. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, talk about archetypal stories. Mm -hmm. um, in my, I'm going to talk about personal relationships and, and basically friendships. So. Um, I've had issues um, in my personal relationships um, with girlfriends, uh, partners in the past um, because I don't want to say it sounds cliche that I've had issues with my parents mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and growing up with my parents um, and them teaching me, well showing me their ways and then me having issues with them, mm -hmm. not dealing with those issues, um, so through violence. Um, um, sort of things that were said, um, like the way they treated. Um, mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like this is where I'm coming from. Right. This is where I all people come I from. I think this you're is totally. Right. I mean, all families yeah. have their issues. Yes, mm -hmm. they do. They do. And what what was happening to me was I was getting. I got angry. I put it away. Mm -hmm. um, I started drinking it away, and numbing out from the story that was really coming up. So every relationship that I got involved with. I was repeating the cycle of pattern of what I'd learned. I'd never really addressed the issue. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I'd gone through, I've been going through relationship after relationship, okay. repeating the same pattern. Same same pattern. pattern. And this is yeah. what people do. I mean, I think almost all people, Absolutely. unless they are super enlightened, they, their life is, is a bunch of patterns right. that they keep repeating, mm -hmm. right? So if people, like for example, yeah, I don't want to use an example because I might reveal too much about myself. But No, no, no. Um, but you, you, know, you, you, you repeat patterns, but then what do you do? You know, how do you approach it? You, you may realize I got a pattern. Oh, this always happens. I'm always going through this. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, how do you... Um, Stop yourself and you reprogram. Yeah, because and yes. people, uh, even if they are aware of those patterns, they're still It's easy to get patterns. sucked back in. It is, it is. And mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, uh, it's comfortable. It's exactly. comfortable just to not have to think about it and just go, okay, this is the way, way, way my life is. And this, I'm talking from my personal experience. Mm -hmm. Um, it was very comfortable for me to sort of say, well, this is what my dad did, you know, uh, sort of in my head. That it must be okay. I'm just going to have to suffer the consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not realizing that all the consequences were um, uh, being dealt with by other people, but I had to deal with the consequences emotionally and physically right. in my body and take responsibility for it's not my dad's fault. It's my it's my we fault. We made our choices <laughs> we made, still. We, yeah. we're, we're still making I'm still making a choice yes. of being comfortable and following the patterns um, of my ancestors. Not saying that all the patterns are bad, right? So, but it was just tended to, go, it tended to go to like the unproductive patterns, I would say. So creating awareness around that and going to the, I guess, nicer patterns were, was more difficult to sort of explore, you know, the, the love that my dad had and the love that my, my mother had or, and, um, and, and things like that. Creating awareness mm -hmm. around, um, around those issues. Um, and then developing a, I want to say an action plan, but a pro-action plan mm -hmm. to sort of say, okay, when this stuff comes up in me and, I, and, I, and I'm aware of, um, of, of what, what I'm doing and what's coming out of me, um, I need to sort of choose a new response to the situation. And it had, it, I had to s basically remain pretty quiet for, for the past three years. I, I didn't feel like I could really respond mm -hmm. to conversations or open up um, because what was coming up was anger, um, you know, not nice thoughts towards other people, and that's not how I choose to be or, mm -hmm. or want to be. So creating a mindfulness around the emotional response, right? So there's mm -hmm. no, always an emotional response. So you, you, you become aware, mindful of that emotional of the, response. Right, Whether and not that, react. That anger. Yes. You may fe you feel the anger. Feel the anger, but don't react to it. You just right. recognize it. Recognize it, let it go, because it will pass. We are human be beings, we're always being, we're not stopping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so th these emotions will pass. They may surface again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then um, what I had to do was actually go internally to realize that um, I am wherever I go mm -hmm. and my issues will follow me no matter who I'm in front of. Mm -hmm. right. So the, the, I, w I recently went on a trip to Costa Rica to sort of get away from myself, mm -hmm. but landed right in the middle of myself. Right. Mm -hmm. Realizing that I'm still responding the same way and I'm on holiday, I'm supposed to be having a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I bought all my shit with me, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so creating an awareness around that and choosing a different response mechanism, basically, to the story emotion mm -hmm. that's coming it up. Sounds easier head. said than done. No, it's, it's hard work. Yeah. It I, I got to admit, it's very, very hard work. Um, I'm not even close to um, discovering what else I need to work on. Um, I've just touched the tip of the, of, the, of the surface of the mountain. But as we allow it, it comes up as it needs to, it seems. Like if we can remove ourselves from those emotions that we kind of created or how we choose to respond to things, and as you let go, even if it surfaces, I find it gets a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And then as you have clarity, as it comes up, you're calmer about it. Yes. You know, and it's important. Like it's about the path again. Sometimes we're never going to get to where we think we want to be, mm -hmm. but you're on that journey, which is the most important. That's it. And it's being able to open that door to other people because so many people don't know they have a problem, but once they realize it, there's that choice of, am I going to do something? There's the fear of dealing with it. But what, with what you're doing as well is creating that support system, which a lot of people need in order to tap in. Yes. So that's huge. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um, so who's taking care of you as well? Are you also helping heal yourself? Um, I am. I'm, I'm learning how to balance. Mm -hmm. um, school, um, when I was at school, it was pretty stressful. Um, so I'm learning how to balance my life um, with per making sure that I take personal time. Sometimes mm -hmm. I feel guilty for taking personal time. But of course. It's, 
Um, mm -hmm. the, when I tell myself, no, Phil, it's self-care. Um, take care of yourself so that you can take care of other people. Absolutely. Um, was uh, one, of the, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned, um, mm -hmm. to be able to turn it off and be okay with turning it off. See, people yes. are so, I mean, I have We talk about that all the time. Too, right? Yeah, you me know, too. People feel guilty that, you know, I have to be yeah. at work or whatever it is, right? But uh, I think too many, I mean. It's like the technology thing we talk about. Yeah. We just mm. can't shut it out. There's and you this do feel guilty because absolutely. You know, people do miss you and but you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do because if you end up, well, this is what happened to me. I got really sick, and mm -hmm. then I had to remove. I kind of had to remove myself um, from. And that's what happened. My friend, my so friends, often. and and, yeah. and I mean, that, even, that hurt. Even just with little things like, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, MS is pretty serious, and Very. I, I want to talk about that a little bit. Sure. But you know, even getting a cold, right, is uh, sometimes is your body saying, you know what, you need to take a rest. So yeah, go home and sleep mm -hmm. and nourish yourself, right? Yeah. 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 If you don't shut down, you're going to get shut down, which is what ends up happening to me. I get the force shut down mm -hmm. if yeah. you don't so stop. On another note, you brought up uh, the, the liver in Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. So guilt will affect the liver, and it's one of the most useless emotions that is out there. It doesn't yeah. need to happen. Yeah, and it's programmed, and we need to learn right. how to, you know, reprogram. Right. Yeah. Guilt. <laughs> <laughs> you need to see what he just did. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> send the guilt, self-compassion, right? There's a reason why it's, really? with the, why it's coming. Yeah, it's really? coming up. Yeah, send it self-compassion and love. Yeah. It's like, okay, there's a reason why I'm feeling guilty, but I love, I love that part of myself. Don't, the, don't hate the... Don't it's hate a, you know. it's a, a well-meaning part of yourself, right? It is. It's something telling you that something's up. Yeah. Right, but it's not necessarily that you have to hang on to the guilt. It's like, oh, okay, well, I do feel guilty, but, but if I don't take care of myself, I'm not going to be able to hang right. out. So. So it's kind of like guilty for not taking care of yourself. Yeah, <laughs> allow it, but do it with love is kind of what you're saying. Right. Yes. And with heart, with the heart. Yeah. So I mean, you you had um, arthritis uh, and you had uh, MS. Yes. Now these are things that uh, some people, when they get a diagnosis of either of those, uh, they figure there's no there's no cure. You uh, know, there's no. Yeah. You know, cure for arthritis. There's no cure for multiple sclerosis, right? But um, it sounds like what you're saying is, is there is a strategy that people can. There's stuff that people can do to really, really deal with those issues, and mm -hmm. I'm assuming other issues too. Yes, I believe that fully. Um, when I was diagnosed uh, with the arthritis specifically, my doctor said, you're going to be in a wheelchair by the time you're 40. And I'm, I turned 40 next year, so that, mm -hmm. that, that, <laughs> that didn't go. Um, and then the MS, um, that, was, that was pretty brutal. Um, that I got to the point where like, I'd lost, um, lost motor function. I was playing guitar and singing all the time. Um, that had to cut back, and I had to basi like, basically relearn a few things. Yeah. And it was pretty frustrating um, to the point that I really just wanted to give up and you know what this what what is this life for and then something inside of me said you're still around um there's a reason why you're still here and there's a reason why um you developed these conditions <laughs> mm -hmm. i didn't want to hear it at the time but now right. i look back um and discovering that you like you say there is a strategy i don't want to say cure because i think cure mm -hmm. is, a, is a western a westernized term for sure. mm -hmm. Um, I don't think there's a cure for anything. It's just the human condition. This is mm -hmm. what we go through. Um, you know, we deal with things, and if we don't sort of address them or let things go, then things pile up and build up, and then they affect us physically. So there definitely is a strategy. Um, it took me to reach out to someone to help me first before mm -hmm. I could start helping myself. And that's the important thing. Right. Um, when, 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 when I say in the shadows of chronic illness, like there is a certain darkness around um, mm -hmm. around having a chronic illness it's, it is the there's a sense of hopelessness um, there's a sense of um, what am I going to do next mm -hmm. how am I going to be functional um, um, how am I going to deal with um, uh, my family how am I going to be functional in society like what like how mm -hmm. am I going to give back am I going to be on disability and um, uh, Canada pension for my whole entire right. life and sort of live this way um, but Going, I looked into alternative medicine. Um, I was happy when I got, at the, in, in a sense, when I get, got diagnosed with MS because I knew I could get medicinal marijuana. 
<laughs> <laughs> and that sort of made me, made me sort of uh, perk up right. again. I'm like, okay, so I'm going down a different path now than I was. So I got, I got, I got really involved with the movement. Right. Um, I, uh, I, I had spent some time volunteering with Calm and, uh, and Rainbow mm -hmm. Medicinal in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and then realizing that um, through uh, cannabis uh, helped me uh, create awareness around my issues. Mm -hmm. And, and to be able to explore those issues and realizing that it's not cannabis alone that can help you do it, it's cannabis and a lifestyle and a healthy diet. Um, if you're having herbal remedies for yourself, it's not gonna work unless your diet is there right. mm -hmm. or your lifestyle is there. If you're, mm -hmm. you're taking herbal remedies and you're still going into a stressful situation, it's gonna exacerbate the stress even Absolutely. worse. Mm -hmm. So. And you can never really truly see the results of the work that you're putting in. No. Yeah. No, no, yeah. And you need to do the personal work. Once, once you've had the awareness around the issue, you need to do that personal work. Mm -hmm. So uh, the strategy is there. So it allowed me to actually open up and sort of like oh, go, there is traditional medicines out there. And, there's, and I'm starting to realize why some of these are made illegal, so sort mm -hmm. of quote unquote illegal, right. that you're not supposed to take because they're very, very healing if, if used appropriately. Um, that got me involved with understanding that, okay, something's working here and I really needed to tap in how this is working into the human body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why this has been used for thousands of years and then all of a sudden in the past hundred years, it's like, no, you can't use it. Yeah. What's going on there? Why? This is something that I'm unsure of mm -hmm. where to and how to speak about, yeah. but we all know that there's obviously something not. Yeah. We right. go there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe that's, that's another show that I would love to, yes. love to get into. But um, for myself, when we talk about strategies and, and, and not necessarily cures, we look at preventative maintenance and balance. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the fact that I had arthritis is w in Chinese medicine meant that, you know, there's an organ system or my internal organ system is out of balance and this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. So we need to correct the, correct the imbalance and, you know, hopefully restore the balance so that I, I can keep continuing to live and pursue and dream and have the, f the full human experience. Right. Um, so through, through that awareness of going into understanding how we work on a cellular level, mm -hmm. that each cell has a memory associated mm -hmm. to it and a brain, um, that just by intention alone up here with the central nervous system that we can send that through our body and actually change the way we exist internally. Mm -hmm which is absolutely phenomenal to me. So I like to send it out there that we, what I've learned in school is that we inside internally have our own, all of our own apothecary, right? We have mm -hmm. our own uh, our, you know, herbal medicine inside of us. We just need to activate it and get in touch with our internal systems. Can we use that, that internal apothecary to counteract some of the uh, assaults that we're getting from the outside? whether that be toxins in the food, in the environment, whether that's radioactivity coming over from Japan, whether that's, um, I don't know, other stuff like that? No, 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 uh, the body has a natural uh, detox yeah. mechanism mm -hmm. and uh -huh. it does need to um, address itself. Now the skin, through the skin we sweat, we sweat toxins out mm -hmm. um, through our urine and through our bowel movements. Um, sometimes it's through vomiting, but that's not so nice. Right. Um, and then tears. Actually, that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes it's good. Like sometimes when I'm nauseous, I'm like, I just need to throw up. Yeah, right? I'm just so get it out. The throwing <laughs> <up>. <laughs> but we, uh, we, our body has a natural purging system. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be activated now. Right. Uh, my experience with, um, I don't like calling them psychotropic, but psychoactive. Mm -hmm. um, we call it psycho psychological, and the active ingredient in. I don't want to say that's the only way, but mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an active way of doing that. And the, 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 flush, mm -hmm. the flushing out of any sort of toxins mm -hmm. um, in the body can be purged. Mm -hmm. um, we look at viruses that can't go away, but we know that viruses are proteins that can be denatured at a certain temperature. So mm -hmm. if somebody is exposed to like a steam bath or a sweat lodge for a certain period of time under the right conditions, um, appropriately monitored that we can denature viruses mm -hmm. on, on a certain level. Wow. I'd like to talk more about that yeah, one day too. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's that's huge. Um, um, and yeah, I, I, did I address that? Um, the natural apothecary? What you're saying is, is that yes, we can deal with any assault that's coming at us from the outside, whether it's radiation or heavy mm -hmm. metals or toxins or whatever. 
we can deal with it. Yeah, we can manage it. We right? need to be yeah. in balance yeah. in order to do that well, though, right? Because yeah. often you need to reboost how your body works so that you can continue healing. Exactly, adjust to the external exactly. environment. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the other conditions. Uh, we've already talked about arthritis and sure. MS, which are most people uh, think that when they get a diagnosis that that's it. There's no mm -hmm. cure and, and, and they gotta live with it. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other ones that people think are incurable, but that what you're saying is there is a strategy people can take? And I'm guessing diabetes would be one. Diabetes is one. Um, it's interesting, um, in, the, in the traditional medicine world, we don't really look at a disease state to name it as a disease state. We look at a pattern that's happening in the body. Mm. And we address the pattern um, mm -hmm. so that it doesn't continue happening. So the, the, what, the disease state um, defined by Western medicine is basically a symptom. Mm -hmm. of something imbalanced in the right. body. So right. in my experience, now I'm, I'm going through, this is my vision um, and my, uh, my experience with the medicine from what I've seen so far is that any pattern can be addressed mm -hmm. as long as it's done appropriately. So even cancer? Even cancer. Yeah. Heart disease? Heart disease. Um, what else? We can look Anything? at neurological diseases. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's, it's all te uh, technically an imbalance in the body. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that we need to address. We, and we, we look at the body, we read the body, we take the, the body's pulse system mm -hmm. to, to look at how the blood is flowing, yeah. we look at the tongue, which is like an internal way of look, looking at the internal systems, the muscle, and then we interrogate um, uh, the client or the, or the mm -hmm. patient um, and, and that, uh, um, that, that, that is wanting, wanting help mm -hmm. um, to figure out where the imbalance is and then we, have, we come up with a traditional Chinese medicine diagnosis of the pattern and then we come up with a treatment protocol to not reverse the pattern, but to balance it out mm -hmm. right. of what's going on. So, so something excess, we, we're gonna tonify it down a bit. If there's something de deficient, we're gonna boost it to bring it, to bring mm -hmm. it up. If there's an organ system overacting on another organ system, which is typically what happens, um, we can tell that organ system to back off and sort of calm down and then boost the organ system that it was overacting on. Mm -hmm. That, if that makes sense to you, Ener yeah. So those uh, that that balancing would uh, be done through acupuncture, through herbal herbal remedies. medicine. Yeah. So the idea is is to, uh, for me, is to uh, through acupuncture and herbal re remedies is to make the, the the client or patient aware of themselves, so that then they don't necessarily need to come back and see me. Right. Um, so much, right? So you come 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 to me or c come to a traditional uh, practitioner for a certain period of time and then it's maintenance preventative right. for people that aren't dealing with anything going to see a traditional uh, medicine practitioner is great just for pre preventative sort Absolutely. of and which is really what it should be and yes, unfortunately exactly. it's we you're dealing it with the other end yeah. right and we panic and what do you do but how do you deal with those people who are not really taking care of themselves still but coming to you for that magic bullet or that cure me but i'm not gonna um, do anything I, I outside of here. I fully believe that with the acupuncture, they come and see uh, with the acupuncture and Chinese herbs, um, mm -hmm. that there is going to be an awareness. There is going to be an awakening at some point. Um, to the point where sometimes patients won't come back and see me because obviously something has surfaced and they just mm -hmm. need to take their time just to deal with what they're aware of. Right. Uh, maybe they go back to their own lifestyle and they, they come back to see me. It's not, it's not my journey what I can help facilitate or what, what traditional medicine can help facilitate is to mm -hmm. create the awareness around the imbalance, but also helping correct the imbalance. Right. So um, to hopefully inform and educate the client so that they can take their health into their own hands mm -hmm. and trust that their body wants to live and stay healthy. You know, it's, it's uh, I always say this, but uh, it's like people need to be responsible for their own health. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So often I hear about people who they, don't take responsibility for their health. They say, you know, they'll give that responsibility over to the doctor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, it's the doctor's, you know, it's up to the doctor to cure me, or it's up to the, you know, doctor can't do anything to help mm -hmm. me, but they don't take responsibility themselves. Right. And what you're saying is, is that regardless of what you might be suffering, there is a strategy you can take mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you really want to take responsibility yes. and get well. Because yes. I think a lot of times people are in love with their illness. Mm -hmm. like we get obsessed mm -hmm. with it, yeah. They, they, you know, they just, it's, they get to talk about it to people and it just becomes part of who they are. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was there um, and I know, I know that people do have to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's important to tell the stories, but it's also important to, uh, to move on from the story, evolve the story. Absolutely. You know, like you, you um, I was, I was very sick. Um, now I deal with minor symptoms. 
Mm -hmm. um, but just taking ownership of my story, mm -hmm. and I don't, I didn't, I chose not to stay there. Because mm -hmm. um, you could be choosing. It's a choice, death, right? Yeah, right. Which yeah. is the opposite of what George Michael's T-shirt used to say. But that's a choice too, right? And it's neither wrong nor right. 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 It's it is a person's choice, and we can get that's another we can get into that. Uh, I, I guess it's important not to be judgmental on it, because like you said, people do make their choices. I don't know how much of that is based on knowledge and understanding of how things are but continuing to want to be sick too you're just kind of a there's the fear of death i'm sure yes and you're giving into it so you're fully detaching yourself from ability to heal yeah, at that point absolutely. i was almost thinking about that because i don't know if you heard uh, i was telling Aaron earlier i thought i might have a brain tumor the other day on okay. the cell phone and i had to get in touch with my mortality and i'm going yeah be all right <laughs> like i was actually you know it's interesting how you can just sort of comes up, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, give up or you know, be faced with a possibility, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and then what—that's th the story that comes up inside, right? What mm -hmm. what, did, what resonated then? What what emotional response came up there? Mm -hmm. um, how did you respond? Did you react, or did you just respond, or did you choose? I'm just I'm hypothetically. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is like I'm using your situation. I think I'm yeah. getting better though. <laughs> yes. So yeah. hopefully, uh, you know, be some time left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the mind, yeah, mindset around uh, illness, I think, for me, was very important because I, I was stuck. I was stuck for a, a long time, realizing, mm -hmm. and then I got bored of being stuck. Yeah. And I was sort of sick and tired of being sick, and I'm like, what can I do about this? And I'm like, okay, That's so right. let's let's try let's try traditional medicine. It's mm -hmm. been working for since we've been alive. You know, and that's an important time not to feel guilty. We have to again. It's harder to do it. It's harder to do it and apply it into your life, but you can't take care of others until you take care of yourself. Yes. There can't be guilt put into trying to improve your health, and if this isn't working, look for the next best yes. thing, and the doctors don't have all the answers. No. And it is very limited in Western medicine. It is limited, but at the same time, um, if somebody um, breaks their leg, sure, go to, go, to, go to the hospital first, and then we can, we can um, um, help the healing process mm -hmm. through traditional medicine. Oh, there's right? a, it yeah. has its place, for I mean, sure. We have Absolutely. to acknowledge that, uh, yeah, everything has its place, mm -hmm. and, and Western medicine does some things fabulously. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So uh, it's a, I think it really boils down to people taking responsibility yes. for their own health, and yes. whatever they're dealing with, be smart about it, mm -hmm. and uh, th think about what your best strategy is going to be. And mm -hmm. be more connected to your own body. Mm -hmm. yeah. Often you know you need to kind of know what's wrong with you to a certain degree Pay and attention. kind of exactly Be mindful. exactly That's yeah, yes. mindful. exactly yes, exactly and when you go to a doctor it's not all surprising it's kind of like this is what i'm feeling what could this be or this is what i think and again people go and they want the answers yeah, and absolutely. they want have no responsibility for themselves and mm -hmm. where they're at so it's important to be reminded as to stay absolutely. connected absolutely yeah okay. i know you need to go and yes. uh so i do um, but uh, yeah, but, but can people, um, if, if they want to follow up, can they get, can um, you help people? They can get, yes, I'm, um, I, am, I am practicing at the Institute, uh, Institute of Traditional Medicine, mm -hmm. which is located at uh, 553 Queen Street West. I love that place. Um, it's a great, uh, it's a great school, and they have uh, community clinics. Um, mm -hmm. So if you check uh, on the internet, um, it's itmworld.org. ITMworld.org. World. Same school that Darren Hall went to with the crystal ball? Yes, balls? Darren, yeah. yes. Darren's mm -hmm. my roommate. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's amazing. Um, yeah, um, ITM World. That's the best place um, to, uh, to uh, I guess, follow up with me. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, I'm new at this uh, business thing, website sort of promotion, so mm -hmm. I have a, a little Facebook page like con just contact information and, right. and a little bit about myself um, other than that I don't know where to go so if anybody out there knows so or has anything mm -hmm. that they want to offer like website design or anything that's <laughs> all so easy. please help yeah. all right so if people want to uh, find you on Facebook what do they look for uh, Philip mm -hmm. Jacobs dot medicine Philip dot Jacobs dot, dot medicine. medicine dot medicine that's it on, on Facebook. Facebook yeah okay I don't know why Philip with way. one L or two one L Okay. <laughs> it just, I was like, oh, that's, that <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> Dot medicine. Okay, great. You got to come back again? Yeah. I would love to. We can do that yeah. conspiracy yeah. talk. You yeah. can yeah. maybe bring Darren conspiracy. in on the same day. Yes. And then have a nice Th little. We'll do some crystal bowls. Some All kinds of things. Yeah, okay. It's always nice to have them too, so. Okay, yeah. excellent. All right. Okay, great. Well, thank great you for having me. Thank you. Great Phillip to meet you too. And, uh, great to have this conversation. Okay. So thanks for doing this. Awesome. Thank so you. Uh, let's take a little break. Uh, 
listen to some Robbie Rocks, and we'll come mm. back and uh, finish up the show here on a Wednesday. We'll be right back. get up on a Monday morn After two days off our minds are torn We can't face what we have to face, namely reality 
We all go to work, pretend we're there, especially bureaucrats. They'll hide anywhere. Someone might take a message by Tuesday. Let's all twitch <laughs> together. Let's all twitch <laughs> together. Wednesday is the middle of the week. That's a double meaning here at Squeak. We can't look behind or look ahead. It's just Wednesday. Thursday's a day we're all over the hill. We can drink, borrow money, ignore our bills. Everything is just a downhill slide. We feel we can do anything, but who are we fooling? Let's all twitch together. Okay, well, back. <laughs> if you gotta go, you gotta go. Welcome back on the show. <laughs> we're These mics on. We want to make sure of that. <laughs> Can you hear? Okay, so we we're uh, just talking about, um, I don't know, psychotropic or whatever uh, you want to call it. Talking about healing herbs. Yes, healing right? herbs. Healing herbs. And how some say some heal and some don't get healed by them. And well, there was one in particular <sighs> that uh, I yeah. know you and I have a little bit of experience with, and. Um, and uh, the, I and I had uh, the reason I was interested in it, mm -hmm. not for myself. Of but course. Not. <laughs> you mean not for myself? Well, I mean, <laughs> no. But I had read uh, over the years uh -huh. that there, there there was this uh, herb from Africa called right. iboga mm -hmm. that um, was able to cure addictions. And yes. addiction is a huge problem, mm -hmm. whether it's cocaine, uh, uh, well, you know, especially like cocaine and. Any Crystal addiction, meth. yeah. I know, but those are the ones Heavy. that are tr that are really causing a lot of harm right. to to people and Heroin. to communities, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sometimes I think uh, that um, addiction is one of the biggest problems that our society is facing. Mm -hmm. But what is the cause of addiction, right? Well, I mean, again, it's about going to the root at the same time. Okay, fair enough. If if we follow mm -hmm. along what Philip was just saying, and that's why mm -hmm. we're having this conversation right now. Um, but I thought as a, but something where, where, you know, when you see that the, the relapse rates when people go into rehab are like right. 95% or, you know, s very high. Yeah. And it's so expensive, right? Absolutely. Um, so if something promises to be able to, and the, the promise of Iboga was that with one treatment, mm -hmm. you could 
cure the worst addiction, whether it's heroin, crystal yeah. meth. Um, in, in the West, though, it's more ibogaine, which is an extract off of iboga. Um, and uh, it does. It does work with addiction. And, um, and obviously, you, I, people can go back to it. I didn't go and do anything with it for addiction. I under, uh, have you seen it, though? Have, have you I seen, seen it? Ibo ibogaine with one treatment cure someone's serious addiction? Um, okay. I saw it cure it temporarily. Mm -hmm. And I know that people have relapses. Yeah. But I also witnessed someone waking up the next day who was a heavy heroin addict who didn't have craving but still was smoking and doing whatever. But this person relapsed. Anything, anyone I've seen has relapsed. Now, the other thing with that is I've more worked with Iboga versus Ibogaine. Iboga is Iboga. But it's That's the same. I mean, I'm thinking Ibogaine it's the same is an thing. extract off of Iboga and it has chemicals. Uh, iboga is Iboga. It's made from the actual Iboga tree root, right? Yeah. And there's different ways you can take it. So it depends if you're using it traditionally or not. Some of the concerns with it, too, is that you can die from it. It's dangerous. And in the West, they don't fully understand the medicine. So even when they break it down, they talk about it in ways it's like, well, it can do this, it can do that. But there's no connection the, to the actual medicine. Which is so, I mean, when you think about it, I know, I know we both had a, mm -hmm. should we talk about it? Uh, okay, a little whatever. bit, uh, the yeah. experience, mm -hmm. um, and um, it was, int what you hear is that, uh, because the West treats it as a drug, right? right? Calls it a hallucinogen, mm -hmm. la gives it that label, and, 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 you know, makes it illegal or whatever, right? unless it's got some clinical um, value, mm -hmm. but when you talk, when you hear about the experiences that people have, it, it's it's an Africa. It comes from Africa, and people say when they take it that they exp they experience mm -hmm. African people or elders, spirits. Yeah, you can have working a combo. with them and having them, and I did experience some of that. Yes, and I have as well, and many people can. I think it depends on how open you are and what you're there for as well, and how clear you are. Yeah. Um, does it mean it's going to cure all your issues or whatever? I've seen different things come out of it. I was around it for quite a while. Um, but yeah, it can take you definitely places and allow you to possibly experience, um, you know, connect with your ancestry as well. It can give many answers. Is it for everybody? No. And do you have to be open and prepared for the whole process? <laughs> yes. You have to love vomiting. Yeah. Yeah, you have to love vomiting and eating and experiencing that flavor. But at the same time, one thing I have to say is it is very, very important who you work with to do it. And mm -hmm. I've yet to meet anybody who I would trust to do with it. It's a good point. Um, well, that's the biggest point. And don't believe everything you hear or a pretty website or saying I have the African knowledge because there's a lot of con artistry around it. And I personally experienced it. Yet, would I support the uh, medicine and would like to experience it more? Definitely. Mm. But it's not something I would suggest that people also do on their own. And you can definitely die. And people do die from it all the time. Yeah. And it's kept under uh, wraps or there's always an excuse for it. But don't take it lightly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you make a decision, just be sure of it. But it does definitely work with uh, addiction. It's just you need to decide who you're willing to trust for it with it. Mm -hmm. You know? And do Ag some again. history. It, um, it's that whole idea of taking responsibility. You have to take right? responsibility. And, uh, and just, you know, doing your best to make the right choices mm -hmm. as you go through the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. All righty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else you want to wrap the show up now? Nope. You it don't? Was, it was a nice show. It was <laughs> nice to have, our, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was a good show. Yeah. So um, I guess we'll just uh, say bye then. And uh, Wine Lady's coming up at 2.30. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow at mm -hmm. noon for more Liquid Lunch. And you, you'll be back here next Wednesday, right? I will be back here next Wednesday. All right, great. Only if you'll have me. <laughs> of course I'll have you. Awesome. Okay, so thanks, everybody. We'll <laughs> Thank see you, you tomorrow right here at noon for more Liquid Lunch. Thatchannel.com.
Can't you hear all? Oh, can't you hear all? Can't you hear me? Oh, can't you hear? Can't you hear? Can't you hear me? Oh, can't you hear? Can't you hear? Can't you hear? for the screw, the big screw, everything we wear, everything we drive, everything we buy is for the screw, the big screw, money comes, and lawyers, in understanding the world, that's just a story.
I'm 